Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys and girls are doing well. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me, and uh, we'll see what we can do tonight to uh, make somebody's Valentine's Day very happy. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Well, uh, good evening, uh, Peter, Bob, Stephen, Ronald. Tim, Jared, Doug, and all who will be joining us in just a moment. Uh, hopefully everything is going well for you all tonight. And um, hopefully some of our newcomers uh, will come in. Um, I'm going to be flying out tonight to Indianapolis, Indiana. I will be at the uh, Indianapolis Woodworking Show uh, this weekend. And then next weekend I will be in St. Louis. I'm going to be up in Indiana for the next uh, little while, uh, 10 days and all, and uh, hopefully getting some documents and files and settings and everything uh, all created and everything for all of you users and owners that um, are waiting for me to get some files and stuff out to you. Um, so tonight is going to be all about the heart, Valentine's Day and um we're gonna be we're gonna do something just uh you know uh we're gonna look at some ways to make some decorative boxes um you know uh simple carving boxes no assembly required uh type things they're gonna be two-sided projects and um hopefully uh they will uh uh you know hopefully we can learn some things uh in this process uh some uh, little little tidbits here and there uh, throughout this project now of course everything that we learn in the class uh, the fundamentals basically are the same uh, but you can adapt those to your own designs of course uh, you know just uh, the process you know creating the the shapes and importing the images and all of that can be um, uh, just pretty much it kind of becomes rinse and repeat after a while and uh, you know the only thing that's going to change is your design and your own creativity that you add to it that being said uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right on in to the class so let's close this up let's get everything settled and I will see you on the flip side. So here we go. All right. <clears throat> so hopefully you can still hear my microphone. I think I did it right this week where I set up the, uh, the audio with this. And uh, if you can't hear me, then you're going to see my lips moving. <laughs> Hello, Tim, Antonio, and Robert. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, uh, All right, so now tonight's project, we are going to set up a double sided project. And I was thinking, you know, should I set up a double sided project for uh, two of them, basically one for the lid, one for the box, because the lid itself isn't going to be th as thick as the box, uh, you know, um, that we're going to be making. So most likely we will most likely we'll have two separate projects and we will have a uh, uh, you know, a project uh, created for the bottom of the box 
and then one for the top but we're going to be using similar vectors so we'll show how to uh, you know create those so we don't have to do a lot of uh, yes Bob I am recording uh, so we don't have to do a lot of uh, messing around with you you know using two separate projects I also thought about you know what if I did just layers and I had our top lid on one layer bottom lid on the other um, and even though we were using two different uh, type thicknesses of material uh, what way could we do it to where um, we could adjust the thickness of material for just when we're calculating the toolpath so we'll explore that uh, but for tonight again uh, so our job setup here is going to be a double-sided job uh, we're going to be working with a uh, 12 by 12 uh, piece of material now it the thickness <clears throat> I want this uh, definitely thicker than three quarters of an inch. And I was thinking about, you know, if I glued up two three quarter inch boards for an inch and a half thickness, you know, I could do something a little decorative. I could glue up two different species or something and make it look, you know, unique where uh, when this thing carves out these pockets in the, in the center and everything that I can see the two species. And I'm thinking about doing that. So for our thickness of our material tonight, we're going to go with uh a one and uh one and a half inch uh thick uh piece of material and you when you're touching off your z uh for your two-sided job you can decide if you want to touch off on the material surface for each side as you flip the board or you can touch off on the top on uh, you know side one but when you flip it over you'll be touching off on your tabletop uh, for side two which is technically side one when it's flipped over and to do that you would just click this little box here um, I most likely am going to set this job up that way uh, to where I will be touching off on uh, the material surface but on the same side so essentially my first touch off is going to be on the top of the board when i flip this over i will be touching off on my waste board because we are going to use a waste board with this uh project because we're going to be cutting it out you know we're going to be cutting out the shape now i'm going to be using the dwc quick set so i will be working off the bottom left corner but you can start from the center or any of the four corners of your board uh, and that is your XY datum position. That's basically a fancy way of saying where are we going to zero out our X and Y axis? Where's our start position? And I'm going to work off the bottom left corner. Now, as a side note for all you individuals that are waiting for your DWC quick sets or have your DWC quick sets, um, I will be releasing some short videos uh, throughout this week while I'm up in Indiana on uh, installing, setup, and using your DWC quick set as well as there's going to be some other files and things like that. And I'm also going to kind of create a little PDF instruction to, uh, to accompany that short little video because it's very short. You know, there's not a lot to it, uh, to the setup and to the use of it. Um, now, uh, for those of you that have uh, changed over to TNG, uh, there's a little bit different uh, process when touching off with the quick set. And we also have the ability to create our own little G code for our DWC quick set and use that little g-code when we're touching off and stuff and i will show you how to do that in a short little video and you'll also get the spreadsheet that will uh help you generate that very simple g-code uh, i will have that complete this week and post it out all right now when we are because we are working on a two-sided job we got to figure out our flip direction are we flipping this board along the x-axis or are we flipping it along the y-axis uh, I am going to flip this board along the y-axis so I've got that chosen and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and let's get into this. Now, <clears throat> I was uh, playing around uh, earlier and everything with creating some, um, you know, designs and all and I started out looking at, you know, just kind of, it's a heart, we're going to make a heart box. I was looking at making a basic heart and then yeah you, you know we could do that that's cool but also at the same time i wanted to uh really create something different uh for the top of the box and so i've come up with this and now if we move out of the way here we can see that this heart is not uh exactly symmetrical there are some ins and outs there's some little peaks and points and things and it's not exactly you know that nice true pure you know heart that we see here in uh part one 
you know, in, in layer one that I have. And so I, I, I really want to work with this and I'm going to provide you guys with this DXF file because um, if you have uh, vCarve, uh, I'm going to show you what this would look like if we were to vCarve this, or not vCarve, I'm sorry, if you have vCarve Pro or desktop, I'm going to show you what this would look like, you know, as a vCarve, but also I'm going to provide you with an STL model that I'm going to post in the Facebook group. Uh, and um, I may post it, you know, even online with this video for anyone that's watching this, not part of the group, uh, you know, that want to make this box. But that East STL model, uh, one, you can use this DXF file that you're going to get of this heart. If this is something, again, this might be a little bit too wild and crazy for you. You never know. Uh, but uh, if you uh, did decide you want to kind of use this, um, I went ahead and turned this into a model uh, using the Aspire software. And so let's take a quick second and let's pop open Aspire and let's take a look at what that uh, model would look like uh, for this box. And I really, really like uh, the way this came out. I uh, So... Um, I, I just really like the, the, the look and the feel. It's something unique. It's not your uh, plain Jane, you know, type uh, looking lid. And so i am created a STL model for you. And that model file uh, will be accompanying the DXF file. And, uh, you know, along with the project file, of course. And so, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section what you think of uh, this model and what it looks like and everything as far as, uh, you know, kind of something unique and different, you know, for the little box. Would that be something that you would be interested in making and giving to your Valentine? Or would you say, yeah, you know, I'm not really a big fan of it. Just comment in the comment section, in the chat section if you can. Or if you're watching on Facebook and you're not, uh, you know, part of the live chat, comment in the comment section below the video link. All right, so, you know, uh, for this, I wanted to take a quick second for you Aspire users just to show you how very simply I created this model, and then we're going to get back into the box. It's a very simple process, uh, very easy to do, so uh, let's take a quick second and look at that. All right, and... Um, uh, this uh, I'm going to turn off the model so we can see that DXF file just similar to what we had in the vCard Pro. I'm going to go ahead and create a new level so we're not creating a model on top of you know the models I created uh, you know uh, before and I'm going to rename uh, this level and I'm just going to call this uh, you know class sample. Now when we're when we're creating shapes from vectors we're going to use the create shape tool in the Aspire software. Uh, the create shape from selected vector outlines is found in your modeling tab at the top uh, first icon in those modeling tools. So if we open this up, now um, one of the things uh, is uh, very simply is the heart itself um, in the uh, DXF had just this original outline okay uh, this original outline and the first thing I did was I, I wanted a rim I did not want I, I needed a this a lip uh, to kind of be created around this model because if I just used this outline here then and let me show you let me let me let me show you what what I'm talking about the reason why I created the offset so I'm gonna select the entire model and I'm just holding down my left mouse button and dragging a selection window across it and I'm going to hold my shift key and deselect this very outside border here that I had created this offset uh, in the original DXF that I created and I just had just this shape and now if I were to create a shape on this, and let's say that I want a nice curved profile, as you can see here in the Create Shape tools, uh, with a very subtle 30 degree angle. Uh, you know, I don't want them to protruding too high or anything. Uh, just a very nice subtle angle. And 30 degrees, you know, 30, 60, 90, even 45 are kind of my go-to angles uh, when creating a curved profile. 
So we're going to go with 30, a nice subtle uh, 30 degrees. And we're going to go with a final height when this thing, you know, when this thing bubbles up and creates that curve, we're going to no limit on that final height. We want to just whatever that 30 degrees brings us, you know, we want. And if I were to, you know, create this as an add on the combine, because it's just a single component and click apply, you'll see that um, because of the way uh, the vectors are, it's going to create a model between the lines. And so as that builds that model, uh, you will see the model build up and let it generate. Um, there's a lot of vectors going on here. And we'll let that generate for a second. Almost there. Almost there. Work with me today, Aspire. Work with me. Work with me. Uh, a lot of going on with my computer as far as the uh, video broadcaster and this YouTube. So it's going to little bit of a delay you can see that uh, Spire is not responding for the moment uh, we're gonna give it a second to uh, build up and then and then we'll move on so uh, we'll give that a second now uh, while that is building up we'll let it kind of catch up to itself I'm gonna pop back over to the vCar Pro so we're not kind of uh, sitting there staring at a, uh, a program for a minute um, if you uh, were to create a design, and, and of course I uh, am uh, artistic, but I'm not that artistic. <laughs> not this artistic. Uh, you know, I could very well draw all these shapes and things and, and all that, but no, that's not me. Uh, this is an image that is traced. And um, with that traced image, uh, I was able to create this, you know, uh, these vectors. Now... <clears throat> If I were to want to use this, uh, like what, like for me, I'm sending it to you guys as a DXF. If you ever want to save your vectors as a DXF file to use in other projects or, you know, share or whatever the case may be, we would select that entire design and we would come over to file export as a DXF and we would save that file. So now I'm going to go into our training video uh, library and I'm going to create a new folder for this class called uh, Valentine box keep things nice and organized and we're going to call this um, oh, deco heart Echo Heart and it'll save it as a DXF file. And now that DXF file I can bring into another project. I can share it as a DXF file, whatever the case may be. Now, uh, our Aspire should have caught up to itself. So let's uh, minimize this for a moment. I just wanted to show you that export, how to export a DXF. Uh, but let's pop back over here and you can see, look at the model that it created. You know, it created the model shape between the lines. So if we looked at this in the uh, 3D view, you would see we get this uh, between the line type model. And that in itself could be cool if we built it up and created some other, you know, a back behind it, a foundation and stuff. But that was not what I wanted to go for. That was not what my intention was. So uh, when it built the model, it looked at the area between lines. And so it created those shapes. So. It made the model between those lines, skipped between these lines, created the model between those lines, so on and so forth. Well, in order to kind of reverse that process, we had to create an additional line, an additional border. And so if I reset this, meaning clear out that model, because I don't want to keep it, if I reset this and kind of erase that out of there, uh, what I did was very simply, um, create an offset and now if I close the create shape tool for a minute um, I will go into my measure tool here and I'm just gonna grab a quick measurement as a reminder to myself what in the world I offset that to and it was a measurement of a sixteenth of an inch it's just a very simple sixteenth of an inch offset okay over here we can see the sixteenth of an inch when I close this tool that little measurement line goes away 
And so in order to create that offset, and I'm gonna delete this one. We're gonna kind of start like, uh, you know, we were starting from that DXF. Very simply, just uh, select that outside profile. We're gonna come into the drawing tab in the offset and layout tools. And I do not, mm, I do actually, I do wanna create sharp corners. I do have some little points here or I might not, but I'm gonna go ahead for this sake and I'm gonna create sharp corners and we're gonna offset outward a 16th of an inch and offset that. Okay, so that creates that vector, that vector outline now. And so now if I go back into the create shape tools and I select this entire design with that new offset, let it select those vectors. I just, again, once again, drew a selection window uh, holding down the left mouse button. Once again, we want to be a hundred percent in that box. Uh, you know, we can select that. Now that is one way of selecting your vectors. Uh, another way of course, is we can right click, go to selection and select all vectors because we're selecting everything that's on our drawing area, or we could very easily use the shortcut code control a. So if you look at some of these tools and options, there's a keyboard shortcut to the right. Uh, and so for the selection, selecting all vectors is control A. So we could do that as well. We don't, <clears throat> we don't have to necessarily draw a selection box, you know, because, you know, we don't have to worry about like, oh, is the box, you know, hundred percent, is it in there? And, you know, it's only going to select certain things. You know, we could very simply hit control A to select all of those vectors. All right. Now for this, again, we're going to do a nice curved profile. Uh, we're going to do a 30 degree angle, no base height on this, um, because you'll see why, cause I'm going to make a base, uh, uh, underneath it, uh, in a, in a different model. We're going to go no limit and we are going to, uh, make that combined cause it's a single model. We're going to make it as an ad. We want to build this up, not break it down. And so we're going to click apply. Now, as it goes through, you can see the calculating at the bottom. It's going to go through and uh, look at this model. Uh, it should be a little bit uh, quicker process uh, to build that model because now it's not trying to fit a model between all those small lines and everything. It's kind of working in the bigger areas. So you're going to see that calculation just kind of rapidly uh, jump as it builds all of those components. It'll be able to just one, of course, but it's going to fill all them in. And so you may see that uh, con that calculation at the bottom of the screen just kind of uh, filling up. Now you can see that by adding that line, now it's building the model in all of those voids where we want it, skipping the smaller areas that it built a model in before. And so if we look at this in our 3D view, we can see that we have that buildup of those shapes and everything and I really like that but if we look at this it's just a simple flat design right all it did was build up those uh, vectors with a 30 degree angle uh, and those shapes well now we need to build the foundation just like uh, you know uh, building a house we're gonna start with the foundation up but in this case I started with the vector the top part of this uh, model and so what I'm going to do is I want to create another component. And so I'm going to start a new component. I'm going to click the button here, start a new component. It's going to lock this component in as a model. Uh, if we look here now, it's, it's turned those yellow model uh, bubbles into grayscale. So that model is there. And for this next component, I am just going to use that very outside vector. That very outside vector is all I'm going to select. And for that, I do want a nice subtle curve profile. I want to give this lid a nice curve and I want it to, you know, build a foundation. And I do want to build a base height. I need some straight area because I have to do some pocketing on the backside for this lid. This is kind of going to be a lid. So I want to build up that foundation about oh what's a good number let's go a quarter of an inch base height and that base is how much meat is underneath that model underneath that shape so we're going to build up this curve this 30 degree curve and then we're going to build up the base 
and um, let's let me let me demonstrate that so you can actually see the uh, what we're talking about here I'm gonna close this for a second and I'm gonna make the model we just built invisible so you can see so if we look in our 3d view here there's nothing there okay and so if I come back into that create shape tool only selecting that outside vector and I do just a simple curved profile 30 degrees with no base height so I can double click on that little line and bring my uh, cursor back to no base height if I no limit add click apply you're gonna see Bear with me a second. We have lost our stream. If you guys and girls can still hear me, bear with me one second. We have lost our stream. Lost our stream. And uh, let's see if we can uh, get it back here. Um, I don't know uh, what happened there, but... Uh, We'll, uh, all right so our stream is coming back here we go all right once again I apologize for that little uh, interruption and let's get back to where we were so let's transition back over here all right now uh, thank you for that uh, little uh, patience uh, with that little uh, technical glitch <clears throat> which was weird I don't know says we're not rest okay so my stream it's not maintaining a, stu a smooth stream and that's most likely because I have a lot of things going on so you guys let me know other if you're if we're back on you should be able to see this heart this bubble that's kind of built up uh, make sure that streaming uh, if you're getting any buffering or anything that is not your internet connection it is not your um, your issue that is on my end uh, so now the stream is flowing again we've got a good bandwidth and most likely when I was building up that model uh, it took some resources from the uh, stream so uh, apologize about that all right so again so the shape that 30 degree angle shape if you look at it here we just have a nice flat shape with it. It's bubbled that curve up, you know, 30 degrees. Well, I need to build some meat underneath that. I need to build some meat underneath that. And that's where the base height comes. So if I come in and I change this to a quarter of an inch base height and I come down and click apply, uh, we may, uh, it may, uh, uh, my, all right, once again, we have um, we have lost our stream. Let's see uh, where we're at here. If you do again, that is not on your end. That is on my end. Uh, and the reason why we're experiencing that buffing buffering is because I've got a uh, I'm building a very not a complex model but uh, my Aspire software is uh, taking up a lot of my processor because I've got a lot of things going on in the back end as far as my broadcaster and everything so uh, we should we should get back to a uh, flow here in a moment Hopefully my vocals hasn't been lost during all of this buffering and stuff and you guys were hearing what I was saying. Uh, I'm going to type in the chat. My apologies for the uh, stream quality. And uh, if, you're, if you can hear me now, if you're experiencing buffering, uh, that is on my end, not yours. So it's not your internet connection or anything. Okay, so now, as you can see, uh, and we should be back up in, in everything, um, but as you can see, by adding that base height, we built up the meat, the base, underneath the shape. 
So we have our shape height, which is the shape itself, and then we have our base height. If you're wondering what those two are, um, we have our base height and our shape height. And so base height is that meat that's underneath the shape. Okay, so I wanted a quarter inch because I want to be able to create a little lip and everything. And I may want to go a little bit wider than this. I may want to go three eighths um, because I do want to create a little uh, pocket underneath that's going to fit into the lid. Um, and the question is, nah, I'll stay there. I'll stay there. Now, now that we've built that foundation, now that we built that foundation, we need to add the other component, the other model we built on there. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top because I want the foundation on the bottom. But when we do that, I'm going to click on the add uh, or the, the component here to turn it and make it visible. And now we can see that um, we have, and let's turn off the uh, red selection there. But now we've created this curved base or foundation for our model to contour to. And so now we've got a nice little subtle 30 degree angle. Now, if you want that to be more extreme, we can, if you want that to be more extreme, we could go 60 degrees, 45 degrees. You know, if you want to, you know, the heart to be a little bit more kind of uh, contoured, you know, bubbled up, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> there's this, I'm sure there's a technical, convex, a little bit more convex. That's the technical term. Uh, but uh, for me, if I look at this in the uh, Z plane, um, this is going to be just a nice little subtle carving. Now, let's talk about properties. It's a little, it's a little light, you know, right? Okay. Hey, let's go into the properties, uh, tool, this little black wrench icon in your Aspire software. And let's select on that component and you'll see it highlights that component that we've got selected on. And let's go into the properties of that component. And you can see our height, our shape height, is only a little bit over 10 thousandths of an inch. There's not much to that. So let's build her up. So I'm going to go a 16th of an inch. And when I tight that in, give it a second and let it regenerate. And we're going to build that shape up. Okay, you can see now that shape is, uh, you know, uh, accelerated that shape height. And so if I deselect that component to turn it off, uh, now you can see we're really getting somewhere. We're getting a really nice looking, uh, you know, uh, heart. We got some really nice definition in the design and everything. And of course, you know, if we go into that properties, you know, we could be adventurous. We could go an eighth of an inch and build that up, let it generate, build that up even more really get some definition now to me that's just a little bit too far right it's a little too much so um i'm gonna back it back down to a 16th of an inch uh it's just it was just a little bit too much but you might like that you know who knows so i'm gonna settle it just give it a little bit of subtlety <laughs> all right we don't want any uh base height in this we want this shape to be a nice contour from the bottom of our other model curving right over, you know, to uh, its other side and everything. So this is the model that, uh, this is the model that, uh, you know, if you, uh, you're going to have the DXF file. So if you want to build this up to your own liking, uh, you can do that by bringing the DXF file in and, uh, you know, creating your shapes yourself. Um, but also uh, this model in the Aspire software, we have the ability to take a model, component, model, whatever you want to call it, and we can export it out of Aspire as an STL. Now, of course, in order for me to do that, I have to close my properties tool, and uh, then I can export out as an STL file. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've created this as an STL file for you guys, and um, uh, you know, the, as a model and, uh, you will have it. Now I'm going to save this 
because I'm going to close this out because Aspire seems tonight with my VCAR Pro and everything else going on seems to be causing a little bit of buffering. So let's go into our Valentine. Be my Valentine. And I'm going to save this as a Valentine box lid. <clears throat> All right, okay, now let that uh, save that model and then I'm gonna close the Aspire and uh, we're gonna go back to the V-Card Pro. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys and girls that have Aspire and those of you that don't, you know, what you know what we can do with Aspire and everything, but I wanted to show you that uh, in case you're curious as to how to take a vector and build a shape off of it and create a model. And again, that offset that we created completely reversed the way that model was built and gave us the design we ultimately ended up with. So uh, once again, let's stand by just for one second, let this save, and then I can go ahead and exit out of this uh, for now. And we can come back into our V card. Now, for the uh, V carve, or for the VCAR Pro, sorry for the VCAR Pro, I, I keep forgetting the word Pro. Um, if I were to take this, I could VCAR this design and, uh, you know, come up with a very cool design on itself as well. Now, a VCAR toolpath cuts between the lines. And in this case, I wouldn't want to create the offset because I do want to carve between the lines. I want all of the inner areas carved away, leaving these areas untouched. So if you think about that highway, you're carving between the lines and it's going around those curbs and obstacles. <laughs> All right, that's my technical term tonight for uh, vectors. All right, so just to uh, give you a, a sample, um, I have V-carved this design. And so let's take a look at that uh, V-carved toolpath in, um, preview mode and let's preview I'm gonna select it when it's when that name is highlighted in the toolpath list we can preview the selected toolpath now also this is checked off here so if I uncheck it we no longer see the toolpath preview so it is no longer visible when the box in front of the toolpath is checked off that is considered a visible toolpath so this button here, visible toolpath or preview selected toolpath because the name is selected and it's highlighted, either one of these two options apply. So I'm going to just click on preview selected toolpath and we're going to let that V carve run through. And let's uh, kind of uh, turn this in now because those lines were close, um, you know, it's going to be a shallow cut. Let's um, Let's see if we can get something a little bit uh, lighter uh, to give you guys a little bit more of a perspective. Uh, no, not that. That's got some green in it. Maple's going to be the best way to go. Um, there we go. And, uh, you know, you can see that carved design. And let's, that should be a good angle there where you can see those nice V-shaped angles. So even in itself as a V-carved lid with a profile cut around or something, uh, you know, that would be very nice as well. If you didn't want to take the time to do it as a model or run it as a model, um, the VCAR design is nice as well. So now, if I added some color, you know, it's a heart. Let's add some red into that toolpath. Um, no, not that kind of red. Let's go with a maroon. There we go. Um, and we kind of back off a little bit in turn you can see that uh, you know it's a, it's a pretty cool design now me personally i would not uh paint the the this box or, or or stain it and everything um let's see if we go with a more subtle little tan or something you know you know maybe something subtle like that to highlight the edges and stuff yeah but for me personally i'm going to be carving this out of walnut and if I were to V carve this, and I'll show you what it looks like in Walnut, um, let that change. It's going to be very dark chocolate. I'm giving some chocolates away inside this box, so it's going to be very dark. Now, 
uh, as a V carve, uh, you know, and this is a very dark walnut background image, guys. Uh, so, you know, your walnut might not look like that. But anyhow, um, you can see what it would look as a V carve, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's, um, and, and again, hey, if I want to go, you know, I love her, but not that much, we can go with pine, you know, and, uh, you know, I have a nice little pine box. <laughs> <laughs> you know um uh, we've been dating for only a week i'm not gonna go with i'm not gonna go buy walnut whatever however you want to look at it <laughs> you know that type of thing all right so let's go back to our maple here and uh let's move on because i just wanted that that has to do with the lid okay now but let's talk about and let's uh let, let's talk about the bottom of our box now uh, because I offset that lid or that, that that lid, you know, in that model, because I offset it out a sixteenth of an inch, then I'm going to do the same thing with this vector here. Uh, I'm going to out, outward uh, 0 0.0625 and I'm going to create, I don't, I don't really want to create sharp corners, but I will. Uh, I'll tell you why I don't want to create sharp corners in a moment. I'm going to offset that outward. And, uh, you know, this is going to be my vector. Now, I'm going to turn off. Uh, this is the only vector I care about right now for the moment. The lid will work on uh, uh, momentarily. But now I want to kind of focus on the bottom of the box. And so all I care about is this outline here that I just created. And so I'm going to turn off uh, the um, layer uh, 2. And uh, if I turn on, well, here, no, we don't want to go that far yet. I don't want to jump that far. Let's move this layer, or let's let's make a copy of this to another layer, and we'll just call this our class box sample layer, and click OK. That way, I can turn off uh, the layer two that has all that vector in there, and just focus on that class box sample layer. Now, notice. Not only did I create a layer and I turned off the other layers and I've got it turned on, but notice I also selected on the name here to make it active because it's the active layer I'm drawing in. Now, again, look if we looked at these this vector, you can see this vector has got some curves and it's got some points and all where those flowers are going to be and everything. And you might not like that. You might not like that rough edge. You want a nice, smooth heart. You want, you know, draw your own shape. You know, whatever the case may be, just, you know, uh, the um, keep in mind for this. Now, from this vector, I want a wall of a quarter of an inch. I want a wall of a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to offset this inward 0.25. Too many decimal points. And I am not going to create sharp corners. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you how we're going to deal with this sharp point here. When Because imagine this router bit coming, you know, cutting this profile. You're going to get a radius there anyway. And we'll talk about how to deal with that momentarily. But I don't want to create sharp corners. And I want to offset this inward a quarter of an inch. Okay. And so we're going to get this shape here. And um, the this is going to, I'm going to have a, a rim here of a quarter of an inch. We're going to create a pocket cut. And we're going to create a little lip. Now from that lip from this rim here, I want another offset inward. And so I'm going to go in inward one more time, a quarter of an inch. Okay. Now this vector here is going to represent the inside of my box. Now my box could be hollow. Okay. I want to just put something in there, a little note or a little whatever. Uh, you know, I want, you know, I might want to, you know, whatever cookies, whatever the case may be. But, um, or we can add some segments to it. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to add segments to this. I want to put some little chocolates and things inside this box or, you know, little diamonds if she's, you know, worthy. No, I'm just kidding. Every girl's worthy. Um, but I want to put some, you know, I want to put some segments in here. So for my segments, I'm going to start off with rectangles. Okay. And so uh, I'm very simply, and I'm only going to be working on one side of this project. All right, I'm only going to be working on one side of this project because why draw what you can copy? I'm going to create all the segments I want for this side and I'm going to mirror it over to this side. Okay, so we're going to just kind of focus over here. 
So I'm going to start off with my rectangle and I'm going to come in, uh, you know, and uh, somewhere right here and create a segment. Now, uh, notice that uh, when I drew that box, I drew over the lines uh, and everything. And that's because I'm going to end up uh, ultimately turning this into a curve to kind of, you know, follow that little area there. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go into node editing mode. And the reason why I did this is because I want, I want to try to give you guys and girls, especially some of the ones that are newcomers and all, uh, you're going to face nodes. You're going to deal with nodes. You're going to deal with things. And uh, I want, so I want to try to make these classes a little bit challenging, but also at the same time, a little bit basic. And I don't know how to find that happy medium, but I want to drag this node here down and I'm going to go right about there. I want a little bit of distance between this edge and the edge of my profile. Now, I also want to bring this one down. And of course, I could very simply drag it down as well. But if I wanted to, very simply, I could click on this item, this node that I want to align to, and I can hold down my shift key and grab this node that I want to align. And I can hit the Y key on my keyboard because the up and down of your screen is the Y axis. If I hit Y, it will bring that down into alignment with that first node that I selected. And I'm going to take this line and I'm going to convert it to a busy a curve so that I can manipulate the curve. And so I'm just going to come in here and kind of create a somewhat of a curve for this first segment. I'm going to drag this uh, part here. I'm going to drag this node over a little bit. You know, I want I want to I want to try to keep somewhat kind of maintain somewhat of a, a, a same distance. I'm going to drag this so oh, this node over uh, right about here, and um, I'm going to kind of uh, create my curve. So I'm going to convert this to a Bezier curve and see if I want to adjust anything. So I might want to bring this in a little bit and bring this curve out. I'm grabbing these anchors these anchors here, I'm grabbing these anchors to kind of pull this curve out a little bit. And I'm going to pull this node in some. And all I'm trying to do is just kind of create a little bit of the same size gap from there. Okay. Now here, I don't, I'm not necessarily going to follow this curve. I just want, you know, something that's close, but I want to come and Create a nice subtle curve and pull this anchor up. The more you pull it up, the steeper that angle will get. Why would those? And that'll be fine there. Now I want, you know, this is kind of a rigid line here. So let's um, go back into our um, node editing mode. And let's turn this line by right clicking on the line. Now, by the way, if your mouse, by chance, if your mouse, I don't know why my node editing won't work. Um, if your mouse happens to hit this little midpoint there, uh, when you right click it, there's, you're not going to have any options. If you ever see that and you're like, where'd that busy, where'd that art go? Where'd that line go that Laney had or whatever? Uh, that's because you right clicked right on one of those midpoints. So we're going to come on the line and right click and then you'll see that menu changes. So I'm going to turn that to a busy curve. I'm going to pull this curve out. Just about like so. And I'm going to pull this node over a little bit and pull this curve back in a little bit. Okay. So again, I'm not trying to follow this line, you know, the outline. I just want to get that segment created. All right. So uh, there's one. Now notice uh, in these vectors, notice this choppy line here, you know, um, and uh, that's because these, you know, it's not a straight line. Well, 
uh, let's, I, I want a straight line because I want to reference off of it. So I'm going to go into node editing mode one more time. Again, that's the second icon or it's the letter N key, N for Nancy, the letter N key for November, whatever you want to call it, uh, it, on your keyboard. Now, if I click on this node here, I can go ahead and hold down my shift key and select this node and again, hit the letter Y on my keyboard and pull that up into alignment. Now, uh, that curvature in, do I want it? Do I not want it? Uh, that's, you know, stuff for kind of design verbatim, but that's fine. Now, from here, let's go ahead and create our next segment. Uh, I'm gonna just create a, now this is important. In Vetric V card nine, if you have nine, you have smart snapping options. And I've got my smart snapping options turned on. What this does is it allows me to snap and toggle to geometry, uh, you know, and uh, you know, it's smart. So meaning that if I just put my mouse over a point, it'll wake that, uh, that vector up. I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just moving my mouse over there. And when it does that, it gives me kind of a reference line so I can start my next segment here. And if I come over, and again, I've already woken that up so I can kind of come over and create my next segment based off those lines. We're going to pull that there. All right. Now, I want these segments, I want a gap of a quarter of an inch wall between them. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to select this item first. It's called align to selection. I'm going to select the item I want to move and align basically to the item I want to align to. I'm going to select it last. And in the alignment tool, I can go ahead and align to the outside edge of that. And now I can select that item and use the move tool under transform objects. I can move relative to its position on the Y axis because that's up and down and we are going down. So it will be a negative number and I want to move down a quarter, negative quarter of an inch. Click apply and that'll give me my quarter inch spacing. Okay, so we've got that second segment and I actually uh, do not want that segment to be the full length. So I'll just double click on it to throw it into transform mode and I'm going to drag this node over a bit right about there. And I'm going to, while I'm here, uh, I am going to hold down my control key while I'm in transform mode. I'm going to grab this middle node and I'm going to pull up another block. By the way, we're making compartments for these candies. All right. Now, again, um, when I'm in transform mode, I can align to an object and everything. And since this one is a quarter of an inch, I can come over and I'm going to just snap to it. So that will keep me, you know, that'll give me my alignment this way. But now I can move this item relative to its position position this time on the x-axis left and right it's go, we're going to the right which is a positive number and i'm going to go a quarter of an inch and click apply okay so that will set that out all right moving along all these long explanations but uh you know you guys get it all right so uh we're going to draw another segment and i'm going to snap to here and come in and I'm going to come out. I'm going to kind of come close to that mid. Oops. <laughs> I let go of my mouse. Uh, let's. I'm going to come out to that midpoint. So let's see here. We're going to go uh, right about there. That's that midpoint. And uh, make that wide enough for a piece of chocolate to get in there. And now we're getting close to this edge. So first thing I want to do is I want to create my quarter inch gap. So I'm going to use uh, my shift key and I'm going to select on either one of these. They're in alignment with each other. So I'll just select this one. I'm going to align uh, to the bottom of that. Uh, that will let me now move under transform objects, move down negative 0.25 and click apply. So now I'm what I'm doing is I'm creating those walls in between those, you know, those pockets we're cutting out now. On this here, I do want to close my move tool and I want to open node editing and I want to delete this point. I want to delete this point. Or I could smooth this point, either one. Uh, I'm going to delete the point. You'll see that uh, segment turn in there. 
and I want to come in and create a Bezier curve. Now, the reason why I deleted that node and everything is because I don't want, you know, I just don't want square boxes in there. I'd like to have something a little bit stylish looking or whatever, but I'm going to curve this out and I'm going to bring this down. Let's pull this curve a little bit closer and down. You know, we're going to create that segment. Okay. Um, the uh, from there, we're going to come down and we're going to do it again. We're going to create a, another box. Uh, let's go three quarters away this time. And while I'm here in my rectangle tool, I might as well draw this one out. I'm going to snap to this one so it wakes it up. And while I'm in my rectangle tool, let's go ahead and finish these off. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Gonna kind of create something. And one more down here. Now, I want I need to get my spacing. My spacing. I got everything kind of drawn out, and I'm gonna make adjustments, add some things where I want to add them, but I want to get my spacing now. So I'm gonna go ahead and these two items, I'm gonna select them first this item last and I can go into the alignment tool and align to that outside edge <clears throat> excuse me now I can come over and turn this item off with these two still selected I can move them down on the y-axis negative 0.25 click apply and I'm gonna do some changes with this one I want to kind of bring it up to kind of fit a little bit of a contour in there uh, we're going to go ahead and select this guy. One of these boxes here, we're going to align to the bottom edge of that. Deselect, rinse and repeat guys, rinse and repeat. And we're going to uh, move down negative 0.25. And then once again, select that one first, this one last. Align to that inside edge. Now, by the way, there are shortcut codes for this that we can, you know, keyboard shortcuts that we can use that will make things faster. Uh, and um, I will show you where to access those shortcut codes. So, again, we will, that way you won't have to keep coming over to the menus, the menus, the menus. Um, I deselected the wrong one. Let's deselect that. And we're going to move negative 0.25. Okay, and then the last one, select it, and this here, <clears throat> align to the bottom, deselect, move down on the y-axis, negative, because we're going down, positive if we're going up, 0.25. All right, now let's go into node editing and let's manipulate some things. So. Uh, for these guys here, I want to uh, kind of pull this down a little bit into the corner there. I want to pull this one up a little here. And that'll be good. This one probably won't get anything in it. It'll be a little spacer, you know, just to fill in that area. Uh, for this guy here, I'm going to jump up to him. I want to pull this node up. And, you know, now I'm just kind of eyeballing that distance, you know, uh, get that in there. Um, I'll pull this up a little bit because I'm going to turn this into an arc, right click and turn into an arc while I'm in node editing mode and kind of curve it a little bit. Now I can pull these nodes up some more now notice by doing that I brought this line out of alignment if I select on this node first this one and hit the letter X on my keyboard because I'm moving left and right I can pull that back into alignment and again you know we're just kind of creating something I don't know unique now on this guy here I want to delete this point 
I want to pull this point back off of that wall a little bit. I want to leave a little gap in there. And I'm going to create a curve and just kind of pull that in. This guy here, I'm going to delete this point. Now, by the way, we don't have to delete the point. I could very simply just drag this over, you know, come over here and drag this over on itself, kind of create a, a gap. So you don't have to delete the point. I just do that because I, you know, I don't know why I do that. There's a reason, madness for everything. All right, and this guy here, uh, what the heck, we'll pull him over. And let's look at this half of this segment. I want this to be kind of curved all the way around. So this guy here, um, let's go ahead and select him. Now this is, uh, you know, if I go into node editing mode, um, I can, you know, basically kind of snap that node to there. I'm going to pull this guy up right into here. Kind of fill that void. And I'm going to turn this into an arc. And I'm going to pull that arc down. Kind of somewhat follow that curve. And again, I'm going to pull this one back. You know, something like that. All right, okay, enough of the dilly-dallying around. Now, I want something here, so let's take this vector. Let's node edit it, and let's uh, get funky with it. Let's pull this node over. Pull this node over. And... There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to select those vectors. Go back into selection mode. I'm going to select those vectors. And I, I'm i over my center line, the center of my material. I'm over my center line on this piece down here. So, real quick, let me pull that back a little bit. Uh, node editing. And let me pull this back a little. Kind of divide that up. There we go. All right, once again, we're gonna go back into our selection mode. You can also hit the escape key on your keyboard. And I'm gonna select all of those vectors and I'm going to mirror them. I'm gonna create a mirror copy. I'm gonna flip about job center and I'm gonna flip them horizontally. Okay? All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Now, for these center points here, uh, do I want one big center piece uh, for a nice big piece of chocolate or something, or do I want individual vectors? Okay, so if I want to space these out, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just space this back. Now notice that distance. I'm at 0 0.3207, you see that, uh, and I'm looking for my magic number of uh, 0.5. If I zoom in a bit, but you won't see the zoom, go right about there. Let's zoom in so you can actually see that. I'm gonna undo that. So if I pull this over, you'll start to see the distance kind of blinking and the closer I get you know I can really kind of uh, somewhat sneak up on that and now I can take that node select this node and X on my keyboard and pull that over okay this guy here I will pull him over a quarter of an inch And if I turn the uh, smart snapping off, that might help. That blinking a little bit, it really doesn't. Um, doesn't help much. But I should have went, I'm an idiot. Uh, let's undo that. Undo, 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 undo. I wanna go an eighth of an inch. I want a quarter inch gap in between these, so an eighth and an eighth on each side. R, R, R. Eighth and an eighth. 
equals a quarter. All right, so I'm going to pull this over an eighth of an inch. And pull, I'm going to select this one. This one, hit the X on my keyboard. And let's grab this one and pull this over an eighth of an inch. And select this, hold down the shift key, select this, and hit the X on my keyboard, pull that in alignment. And oh, I'm gonna, I want this one, I'll, I'll keep this one as one whole piece since there's really not much fill there. So I'm just going to trim um, these lines away. All right, to create that open compartment there for that. And for these guys here, Oh, what do we want to do? All right, let's go into node editing. Let's do something a little different. Let's take uh, these nodes. And if we open up our, oops, sorry, uh, wrong one. Let's go to these nodes. And I'm going to just pull them all back at one time, an eighth of an inch. Click on this one, select all of these points, and pull them back an eighth of an inch. And let's do the same thing with this one. <clears throat> select these nodes, pull this back an eighth of an inch, and grab these guys and pull them back an eighth of an inch. All right, so this is my little candy heart box. Da, 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 da. All right, now, because the heart is a little different on both sides, you know, we have some different, you know, spacing and things, and that's fine. I mean, we can come over and we can adjust it as we need. Uh, what I'll do with this is go back into normal selection mode. I'm gonna grab this and I'll just kind of stretch it out a little bit. Maybe down a little. Uh, for this guy here, I'm not going to change the shape. I'm just going to kind of pull it over just a little. And for this guy here, I am going to go into node editing mode because I want to pull these two nodes back. And now I'm just going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and just tap that back a little bit. While I'm at it, let me pull. Oops, undo. I grabbed the wrong noter. And I'm going to use my arrow keys and just kind of bump that back a little bit. Not much. All right. Okay, so here's the inside of our box. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do here now. Um, for this uh, point here, uh, go back into normal selection mode. For this point here, you know, when our router bit comes, it's going to create a radius there. So we might as well create that radius. Here's a quick little trick for doing that. Uh, I'm going to take and select that vector. I'm going to go into the offset tool, the offset tool, and I'm going to offset the radius of my bit. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill, and I'm going to offset outward. Undo that. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to offset while I delete the original, delete the original. I'm going to offset outward an eighth of an inch and click offset. And then I'm going to change right back and offset inward an eighth of an inch and it'll create that radius for me. Okay. Outward then inward. Okay. Upward and onward. All right. Now for this, I'm going to have a router bit coming and cutting a lip around uh, the outside of this box. And I want that router bit to be able to clean up the nice edge here and everything. So I am going to create a small little duplicate. I'm not going to delete the original, but I'm going to offset outward a small amount, uh, 0 0.06, and click offset because I'm going to use that vector and this vector for my pocket cut. And let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> delete all of these uh, tool paths. from my previous uh, playing around. Delete all. We're gonna start with a new. All right, 
So we're going to select this very outside vector that we just created, that little offset outside, and this one here. We did that so that bit can clean out around this area, and we get a nice clean edge on our profile there. Uh, we're going to do a pocket cut. We're going to cut down a quarter of an inch. We're going to use a quarter inch in mill. If your bit's not in there, hit the select button. It'll open your tool database, and you can choose your bit. I'm running my quarter inch in mill at 55 inches a minute feed rate, plunge rate of 20, and I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm going to calculate. Now I don't wanna raster, I wanna offset this pocket. I don't wanna raster, raster back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, ridiculous, unoptimized tool pass. So we're gonna create an offset so it just goes around and around. And um, I'm gonna hit calculate, and let's reset the preview back to a blank board because we're kind of focusing on the bottom now and we're gonna preview that selected toolpath. Move it along. All right, so this is gonna be our lip that our lid is gonna fit, you know, our lip, our lid is gonna have a lip that fits down over this, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and select all of our inner vectors. And again, if I'm not 100% in that selection window drawing from left to right, it will not select any of the lines it crosses, only what is 100% selected, 100% within that selection window. Okay, notice how that's 100, that was hard, so we're 100% in, it selected them. So if I come down and just barely miss not, not my inner part, just barely miss that. It'll only select those inner parts there. All right, this also is gonna be a pocket cut. Uh, for this inch and a half piece, I want some deep pockets. Uh, I wish I had deep pockets, but we're gonna, we want some deep pockets uh, for the candies and everything. So I'm gonna go, oh gosh, do I wanna go 0.5, a half inch? Yeah, let's go a half inch. Now, Here's the thing you can think about, okay? Of course, we're gonna be cutting inside these pockets and it's gonna be cutting a radius in here, you know, on all of these corners. You know, these sharp corners aren't gonna be there. So, uh, we don't have to go do anything fancy with it. Our router bit's just not gonna cut in those sharp corners. You have to understand that. That round router bit's gonna give us a radius. Now, one of the things that we can do is we can already account for that. Uh, we can just come into the fillet tool, show you guys that are new a new tool, the fillet tool. Fillet is a way to uh, create fillets to spans. And I want to do a normal fillet, the radius of my tool. I'm going to be using a quarter inch bit to cut this out. And if I come over here, I can click on the corners and I can add that eighth inch radius to my pockets here. Okay, to my points. There's radius there and let's zoom in on this guy there's already a little bit of a radius there and so um, you know there's not much one there we go all right you know we could have done that before we mirrored this you know what I mean but it just takes a second to uh, click all the way around you know or clicks and we can put that radius in there you know, uh, we're in that way we can now we, you know, we know what that radius is going to be. We can adjust our design a little bit if we wanted to, you know, but I'm not going to change it from here. I'm just putting the radius on there because we won't be able to get that sharp point. And again, I'm just kind of uh, popping on these corners here with this fillet tool. Almost done. Popping all the way around. One more. This guy is going to really shrink up. He's more of a filler than anything. And let's see what I missed. I missed this guy here. And I missed these guys here. All right. So we got our nice little fillets on there. So the fillet tool is a way of putting a radius on a span, uh, you know, basically creating vectors. And there's different types of fillets. You got normal fillet, which is what we were working with, dog bone, T-bone fillets, uh, and plasma cutter fillets, or drag knife. But um, the um, dog bone and T-bone fillets are for joinery, you know, working with slots that fit together and things. Uh, we're not working with that, so we're just working with a normal fillet. 
All right, let's go ahead one more time. Uh, let's uh, select, let me up a little bit higher. One more time, Lenny, you can do it, you can do it. There we go. All right, our pocket cuts are gonna be a half inch deep. I'm gonna be using a quarter inch router bit with this. I'm gonna be doing an offset cut and we're gonna call this our uh, uh, inner pockets. And no spaces, I don't like spaces and file names. Inner pocket uh, point two five in mil calculate. All right, let's preview that selected toolpath. <clears throat> and guys, make a comment. Make a comment. Uh, uh, and round corners are easier to clean. Absolutely. Um, uh, make a comment in the comment section. Uh, give me your feedback. Uh, you know, is this an ugly looking box so far? Is it okay? You know, we haven't uh, cut it out or anything. But, uh, you know, um, what do you think? What do you think? Is a little candy box. Uh, also, um, you know or a jewelry box or whatever because after they get the candy out of there they can put little earrings little bracelets little you know uh keepsakes whatever you know it could be a, a box that could be around forever <laughs> you know what i mean uh it's not just a one-time use tool we're making this out of some nice wood uh, or not tool but a one-time use box i mean you know little bracelets can fit in there those little uh, diamond tennis bracelets that you're going to buy her on Valentine's Day will fit in there perfectly. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've got that done. Uh, really, the only thing that we really need to do with this now is our profile cut. Okay, our profile cut. And so if we come in here, um, our uh, profile cut is going to be this inner vector here. We're not this 16th. This 16th inch was just for our pocket. Okay. Uh, we're going to use our proper profile and we're going to come in and do a profile tool path <clears throat> for a depth of 1.5 inches. And my pockets, you know, this is 1.5, only one and a half inch. So it's going to have a one inch base. I might want to make those pockets a little deeper so they could definitely hold some big old diamonds. Um, we'll think about that in a second here. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. Now I have my quarter inch end mill taking a eighth inch pass at a time. So it's going to do 12 passes, but I'm also using a spiral ramp uh, for this. So it'll go pretty quick uh, and everything. Um, and uh, we're going to do an outside cut. We're going to, I'm not going to add tab. We're going to add, you add tabs to your profile cut, but I'm not going to add tabs uh, just so I can delete the waste material and show you. And then I'll come back and show you how to add tabs. So, I want to add a ramp to this. I'm going to do a spiral ramp. And again, if you guys remember from earlier classes, when we use a spiral ramp, I want to come up to my tool and I want to make sure that my plunge rate of my tool matches my feed rate. We want, think of a, <laughs> what's a crude, here's a non-crude way of saying, okay, think of a toilet flushing. You know, it spirals as it goes down. Nice, even flow. Well, as this router bit is coming around cutting, we want it to drop, drop, drop and we want it to drop at the same rate we don't want that bit having to slow down just for it to drop we want a nice even flow when it's cutting and cutting this so we want our plunge rate and our tool rate to match all right we're going to call this uh <clears throat> box bottom profile and we're going to click calculate okay we're going to preview that selected tool path All right, so let's delete that waste material. Boy, my maple is dark today. I don't know why my maple is dark. It should be much lighter. Um, but uh, so we've got this box here. And I do, I, I decided, I do want to make the pockets a little deeper. So let's go into that uh, inner pocket toolpath and let's bring that dad, bad boy down to about three quarters. Calculate. Let's preview that toolpath and uh, open up those pockets a little bit more in there. 
All right, while it's uh, calculated, I'm going to take a quick second. I'm going to jump over to our um, post on Facebook and everything. Mike Glad, welcome, Mike. Uh, glad to see you posted in there. And uh, thank you for the comment of the awesome design. Um, uh, I, I will uh, kind of uh, create a video one day showing you guys how to, you know, if you do want to participate in the live chat, how to get in on there. It's super, super simple um, and everything. All right. Um, so there were no comments. All right, so this is going to be our box. Now, Lainey, if you're just simply cutting out a box, why are we, um, why is this as a two-sided project? Now, of course, I just wanted to show you the profile cut just to kind of uh, show this opening all, but because the reason why this is going to be a two-sided project is we have to put an inscription on the bottom. We have to V-carve something nice and cute and lovely on the bottom side. So now this profile cut, uh, we would typically do on that backside, uh, but uh, you know, if we were carving a different type of model, but I'm going to be carving the bottom inscription first and then flipping this over and then carving this uh, top area and all. So my profile cut is going to be the last thing that gets cut out. Now I do want to pop back in here so I don't forget and I want to add some tabs to this cut and I want to add uh, I do not want to be in any of these sharp point areas and I just want to add a couple of tabs and general areas uh, to keep this part from moving when it does get cut out. I want to try to stay away from the curve too much. There's that's a heart. It's, it's all it is is curves. Um, that'll be good. All right, and my tabs are gonna be about a quarter inch. Uh, let's go a little bit, since it is an inch and a half, let's go 0.3. Uh, I'm sorry, not on the length, that's gonna be a quarter of an inch. Let's take this up, sorry, to uh, 0.2. And uh, we're gonna calculate this toolpath once again. And if I reset this back to a blank board and preview all these toolpaths, uh, very quickly you would see where those tabs you can actually see the tabs in the tool path there all right so this is this is the side we're going to be cutting second the first side we're going to you know the bottom side we're going to cut first it's going to be just a very simple v-carve inscription on the bottom and then we're going to flip this over and uh you know create the uh the the you know the, these pocket cuts and profile cuts and everything all right so now if we were to look at this in the Z view, you'll see the tabs. If I turn this a little bit, you'll see those tabs there that are holding that part in. And those will be sufficient enough for this. This is a pretty bulky piece. Now, again, this wild crazy edge, you know, is because we are working off a vector that has a lid that has this wild crazy edge and everything. And I, me personally, I like it. I, you know, that the the symmetrical uh, heart and all is just kind of gets boring after a while. But you might not like that rough edge. You might like me. Oh, man, that's a pain in the butt to sand, whatever the case may be. But uh, no, uh, it's going to be okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's flip over to our um, bottom side because I'm actually going to run the bottom side first. Let's go back into our Z view here. We got everything flipped over. And of course, you know, when the bottom side, everything is mirrored. So if we look at our 2D view, you can see the vectors. These rulers here being yellow, let us know that we're in the bottom of this project. And so when it mirrors, we I am flipping my board. I'm flipping my board left to right on the Y axis, not left to right, sorry, uh, top to bottom on the Y axis my x and also that's why everything is upside down here and so when we write our inscription be sure that you mirror your inscription upside down so that uh it's not upside down on the bottom of the heart all right now what first thing i want to do is i need to create my alignment pins guys and girls if you are going to be working on a two-sided job you can set up a jig you know that traps this piece so that when you flip it over you know it falls within that jig basically for you know frames on each side of our project you know we could come in here and have you know uh four blocks that we trap our project with uh when we are clamping and you know when we flip it it's going to just land in that same spot and everything but if we're not doing that or a frame around it whatever the case may be 
But if we're not doing that, alignment pins are gonna be your bestie friend. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be using quarter inch either dowel stock or quarter inch metal pins, depending on uh, what I wanna do. And so I'm gonna come in here and draw not a rectangle you can't put a square round pin in the square hole uh, we want to draw a circle and i want to come in here and i want that to be 0.25 d for diameter while i'm holding my left mouse button and i can create that um, i'm going to go ahead and bring that over a little bit and i want to make sure it is centered vertically up and down so I want to go to the alignment tool and to the material, I want to align it vertically. Okay, so now I'm centered on my piece. From here, I'm going to just take a quick uh, mirror tool and I want to create a mirror copy. I want to flip it about the job center and I want to flip it horizontally. Okay, these are going to be my alignment pins. Now, uh, with these alignment pins, um, you know, there are... Uh, <clears throat> there are um, you know some people that come in and some of you guys might even do it if you've done this before and you'll create a third hole uh, so that uh, you know there's only one way to flip the board type thing uh, and uh, for me I just do the two uh, I'm flipping you know uh, top to bottom and uh, but if you ever want to kind of understand that process and, and everything, uh, let me know and I will, why you would do a third hole and things like that. Let me know and I'll go over that. But, you know, we don't need two tonight. Uh, right now, we just need our two alignment holes. All right. Now, text. Okay. For our text tool, uh, we got to write something sweet. Because it is Valentine's Day. Now, guys and girls, this can be a guy's box too. You know, my title of my video said, you know, a, uh, you know, uh, a Valentine to win his or her heart. Now, um, it's a heart-shaped box. Guys might think that's a little too feminine or what have you. But we could do something a little different, you know. Um, in each one of those slots, especially the wide ones, girls, make your slots a little bit bigger and fill them with router bits, okay? Fill those with router bits. Fill them with, uh, uh, you know, stuff we can use in our shop, nuts and bolts. <laughs> I prefer router bits. All right, so um, uh, let's see here. Um, oh gosh, I'm not a cheesy guy. What do we gotta do here? Uh, uh, love you, love always, all my love. Uh, somebody throw something. Fill it with cash, Tim says. That's also good, too. Make it just one big pocket and fill it with cash. Uh, ladies in the group, help me out here. Um, I, I, I'm single. I don't do Valentine's. So uh, uh, what would be a good inscription? Um, uh, you have my heart, love always, something silly. All right, let's do this. Uh <clears throat> Forever, my love. 2018. <laughs> we'll do that. That's fine. All right. So we want this centered. I'm going to use a monotype course of us. It's a really nice font to uh, V carve with. So we're going to make it a little bit bold, give it a little bit of meat to it. And um, we're going to throw that in there. So now I want to bring this in and I wrote this as a text block, okay? And uh, remember our heart's upside down. So if I carve this like this, then it's going to be kind of upside down on the heart. Hope you're... <laughs> Make the inscription to my daughter. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, if I made it to my daughter, you know, it would be... Uh, Something like, you know, uh, uh, let's see here. Um, always that is girl. I love. 
You. I don't know. She's daddy's girl. All right. That's a lot of word in there. I don't fit it on that heart. But you know what I mean. The, the, the inscription could be anything you want. Um, the uh, So, let's uh, first of all, let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, let's hear that. Hold on a second. Uh, I, I did that backwards. Um, stand by one second. This should be cut from there. Put there. Always. Forever. Forever. Gosh, now we're getting now we're getting technical. Always and forever. Mm. Come on, Lainey, put a space. Put a space. I'll I'll adjust the spacing after I oops. I'll adjust the spacing after we get there. Always and forever. Okay. All right, so we're going to delete that, and we're going to go ahead and reapply that. Now it's going to be too big. Let's go into uh, make this 0.75 on the text height, and uh, that'll be fine because this part is going to be inverted. It's going to be in the wide section of the heart. And do I want to adjust the spacing? Yeah, might as well show you the edit text spacing tool, and I can go ahead and uh, bring this in a little bit. Uh, forever was kind of way out there. Something like that. Now, um, with this, I want to center it on my material. Okay. I want to center it on my material. And I want to invert it, basically mirror it. Okay, but this time I'm not creating a mirror copy. I am flipping it about job center and I'm flipping vertical. Okay. Oh, this class is going to be fun. Now, notice if I turn this around. Oh, I wish I could turn this around. Okay, here, let's do this. Let's cart, let's create a toolpath. You'll see that we have to kind of flip it horizontally so it reads proper. But uh, let's uh, let's create a V card just so we can see what mistake we have made if we don't go any further than this. And let's calculate this toolpath, and let's preview that selected toolpath. All right, if I turn this around, what's going to happen? We're backwards, right? Okay, so be mindful of that. So let's go back in our 2D view and we need to flip it horizontally, okay? So it reads proper. And then if we went back into that toolpath and recalculated it, reset that uh, preview and preview that select toolpath, it will read proper. Now, uh, you, I love you, 2018. Let me see here. Uh, let's fix something real quick. It's going to be the fun part when I open the text box up and try to edit it. It's going to re put it back normal. But um, I love you should be all on one line and apply. Once again, we are going to center to our material. We are going to flip it, mirror it, not making a mirror copy. We're going to flip it vertical and horizontal all right all right okay so we've got that created let's create our two tool paths for this i'm going to go ahead and delete that one so we can because i went through that one kind of fast we will start off with our alignment holes drill our alignment holes first now with the alignment holes um you can do a drilling operation since we're using the same size diameter bit a quarter inch end mill uh, to create the holes. If you were using a smaller diameter bit, you would want to use the pocket tool pass so it comes in here and pockets that out to that quarter of an inch. I'm going to use the drilling operation uh, and uh, um, we're going to go a depth 
all the way through our material. Remember, we got to go through our material, right? But I want to go into my wasteboard. I want to go into my wasteboard. And so I'm going to go just a quarter of an inch into my wasteboard for my alignment pen. So while I'm here, I might as well type in add 0.75 and hit the equal sign on my keyboard to get that um, that uh, that they're cut. Now, that was incorrect. Uh, my material is an inch thick and I'm adding a quarter of an inch. <laughs> Not three quarters. All right, equals. All right, so we're going 175. So you wanna make sure you have your bit sticking out long enough so you can cut through an inch and three quarter. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, they do have extended length bits and all that stuff if you need. All right, now I want, this is a lot of cutting. If I do not use pecking, that sucker is gonna just drop down and it's gonna bury itself. It's gonna burn up the bit. So I wanna use pecking and I wanna retract above i can retract above the wood to kind of pull that material out you know the starting cut depth or i could retract above the previous height of the pass i'm going to retract i want to pull all that's so an inch and a half of material that is good i want to pull all that material out but i don't want to i don't need to retract that far above so i'm just going to go 0 0.04 okay and uh we're going to go ahead and um this is going to be our alignment pin holes and we're going to be using a 0.25 em we're going to calculate that toolpath it's going to say hey you're cutting through your material use a waste board so you don't damage your tabletop we're going to click ok because we're aware of that <clears throat> all right and if we preview that selected toolpath you'll see those holes there There's our holes. All right, remember this is inverted. Okay, so now let's go back in and let's select our uh, V-carve again. And let's create that toolpath one more time. That is a V-carve toolpath uh, for all you newcomers. We are gonna do a start depth of zero at the top of our board. We're not gonna select a flat depth because these are small spaces between these lines. So they're not gonna cut very deep as it is. If they were gonna cut deep and we didn't want them to cut too deep, we would set a flat depth. Or if we got a warning from our software saying we were cutting through our material, then we would wanna set a flat depth. Well, this is not coming anywhere close to cutting through our inch and quarter. It's not even coming anywhere close to cutting into our pockets that are on the other side uh, with these small letters here. And it all depends on your font and everything. So I don't need a flat depth. I'm gonna use my 60 degree V bit for cutting this and I am running my 60 degree V bit at uh, 35 inches for the feed rate, 25 inches for the plunge rate. And I'm gonna go ahead and this is gonna be my uh, little um, message text. I was gonna say inscription, but I don't, I, uh, spelling that would be embarrassing right now, uh, especially this late in the evening. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a uh, 60, PG bit. So we'll call it message text. <laughs> All right, let's reset our preview. Uh, let's go ahead. We've got those two toolpaths done. We're going to preview all of the toolpaths, side one and two. So we're going to preview all sides. So on this uh, side here, we've got our two holes. We've got our inscription, which it didn't show. That flipped over pretty fast that would look very good lasered absolutely and while we said so that's a perfect uh steven perfect uh thing to show you guys and girls uh what it would look like if we lasered it you know if we had the digital wood carver six watt laser on that back side for the inscription that would be outstanding uh to do so we'll do that let this finish this uh, preview and we'll go back and make that very simple toolpath change. All right, so let's uh, rotate this around so we're not looking at things upside down. And by the way, for you newcomers, I'm just holding my left mouse button on my drawing area, my preview area, and I can tilt, turn, rotate, whatever the case may be. So as a V-carve, 
this looks very, very nice, okay? Everett Wicks. Guys and girls, ignore that comment in the comment section. I do apologize. Everett will be blocked from this channel permanently. So, get, uh, get everything out right now, Everett, because you're done. All right. You know. <clears throat> Okay, so as lasered, if I wanted to do this toolpath as a laser attachment, uh, or a laser engraving, should I say, not an attachment, uh, then it's a very simple toolpath. We're gonna come into our 2D view, we're gonna select our inscription, and we're gonna come in and we're gonna choose a pocket toolpath for this. For our pocket toolpath, uh, our cut depth is going to be zero okay when we're laser engraving we do not want that laser up and down moving and all we want it staying at its height so you're gonna set it as zero now for this preview purpose for the purpose of this preview I am going to uh, set this depth as a 0 0.02 just because if I tried to preview it as a zero you would not see anything in the board but we're gonna go 0 0.02 and we're gonna select our laser tool, our digital laser. If you do not have your tool set up, uh, you can pause that video here. And uh, we've got a diameter of 0 0.0197, pass depth of 0 0.01, step over 48.2, power of eight. And of course you would adjust this depending on how you know uh, much you want. Uh, I'm, I've been happy with my engravings. If you guys and girls in the group saw that, uh, um, those plaques that I were making for the woodworking shows that was carved at a, uh, engraved at a power of eight and I've been happy with that. So I will stick with that for this and I'm running 45 and 20. And so I'm going to click okay and throw my laser in there and I'm going to, uh, come in and the passes are kind of ignored in this case uh, because we have a 0 0.02. It will be set to zero when we actually calculate the tool pass. So ignore the passes on this. We're going to do an offset uh, on this. Uh, you can also do a raster, you know, either way. But, uh, you know, I've been working with the offset and uh, I'm liking it uh, very much uh, with the laser. And so we're going to, uh, we'll just call this as a laser engrave. And we're going to calculate that toolpath. All right. So now if I reset this preview, I'm going to preview uh, just this toolpath, preview just this selected toolpath. And now let's give it some color because the laser will add some color to it when it burns. And so, you know, as a laser inscription, uh, it would look very, very nice. And that's actually a, you know, um, that would actually be a good idea. You know, V-carve or laser, either one, but uh, that would actually, you know, look really, really nice as a laser engraving. Okay? So very simple pocket tool path uh, with our laser tool. Uh, now, that's for the preview. You guys saw the preview. Now I'm actually going to come in there and fix this toolpath. Our cut depth is going to be set to zero. Uh, and we will calculate this toolpath with that cut set depth set at zero. Now, when it comes to uh, saving this particular toolpath, because we're going to be using two separate post processors, uh, when it comes to saving this particular toolpath, uh, we would come in and let's say we were saving this toolpath. We would not be using the digital wood carver inch tap as we standardly would, you know, with our rest of our carvings. That's what we're going to be using with our rest of our carvings or the G code inch tap. If you have, you know, the older software, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop this down and we're going to choose our digital laser inch tap post processor. 
and we would save that toolpath using that post processor. Once we finished saving that toolpath and we were ready to save the others, we would make sure that we come back and choose our digital woodcarver inch toolpath uh, or tap post processor for our carvings. So you have a laser post processor that you would use for your laser engraving and a um, regular post processor for your carvings. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So let's, uh, we've got, uh, if we go ahead and close this and preview once again, all of these tool paths on all sides, the bottom of our box is complete. Let's see if we can get through. We got 15 more minutes before nine o'clock if we do not. And you know what? Let's actually, let's actually stop here. Uh, let's stop here and let's do the lid. Let's do the lid uh, in another class. That way we can do some Q and A. You guys want to do that or do you want to do the lid now? Um, either one. Uh, which one would you rather do? I'd like to do some Q and A and uh, you know, we've been here since seven. Uh, we're an hour and 47 minutes into it. Let's focus the lid. Let's end this, keep this kind of short. Uh, let's uh, do the, uh, by the way, why is it not? Let's preview all the tool paths, all sides, preview all sides. Um, and uh, we will do the lid in the next class. And then um, in the next class will be way before Valentine's day. Cause I will hold uh, what's tonight? Wednesday night. Uh, Monday is the 12th. Valentine's Day is the 14th. Uh, Monday is not the 12th. Sorry. Monday's the 6th. Let's do a Q and A. And uh, and wrap this up. And we'll do the lid on Monday. For this part, this box. All right. Let it do this profile cut here. All right. So on the back, uh, I'm gonna add. Uh, our color here for this, uh, not this color, for this toolpath color here. And of course, you're not gonna be able to see it fill in with that color because we have the toolpath set to a little bit of an outline um, and everything uh, in there. But, oh, I know why. I'm a goofball. Reset, come on, Lenny, one more time. I don't, you don't do the laser or the V-carve at the same time. It's one or the other. Or we can do the laser and the V-carve and we can fill in the V-carve with our laser engraver rather than painting it. So either one. Uh, Let's preview those tool paths. All right, so what do we got here is a question. Um, Doug, quick refresher on how to clear the offsets in CNC USB controller. Steven, thank you very much. Doug, you just click the button that has the red X, the red X with three or with four yellow arrows around it. Uh, Stephen was closed. Uh, he just mistyped it, but he, it was the same. He had he had the exact thought. Um, you're gonna click on the button with the red X and four yellow arrows around it. You were right, Stephen, but you just had a little bit backwards. Three red arrows. <laughs> uh, it's the red X with the four yellow arrows around it. And that'll clear the offsets out uh, in the CNC USB controller before uh, the beginning of each job. Now, notice here we don't, um, you know, we don't see our engraving on the bottom side because it's a laser engraving. Um, if we did just the very simple V carve um, and we preview that selected toolpath, let's go ahead and show that. Uh, Chris, yes, I can contact you right after the class. We can see if we can work on it because I also fly out right after the class to Indianapolis. So I can, I can, yeah, I can spend, yeah, I can spend a little time with you, Chris. I'll give you a call right after the class. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and preview that uh, V-carve inscription. All right, 
there we go nice little v-carve inscription and uh, you know if we were going to uh, add some color to that toolpath we were going to paint it I'm going to go a maroon you know give it a nice little deep maroon color in there looks good all right and uh, let's go ahead and look at all the other sides let's see what this box looks like and then we'll go while you while we're previewing where you guys start typing your questions even in Facebook if you're watching in Facebook uh, type your questions uh, Mike and everybody in the comment section of the Facebook post okay type in the comment section of that video class post and I will be able to read those comments uh, and questions and everything in there um, uh, Tamara how do we know what speed to run with variable router bit types versus solid wood MDF and plywood well the uh, with that we are uh, your solid wood hardwood and plywood you're typically running around the same uh, speeds and uh, you're talking about speed when you say speed you are talking about the RPMs of the router bit because that's what speed refers to Tamara uh, the RPMs you're gonna be running around uh, 24,000 RPMs uh, you know your highest setting with your small diameter bits once you're the rule of thumb with a router is uh, as your bit diameter increases your RPMs decrease on the router speed now the feed rate could vary from uh, material to material because you know we might be carving in um, wood uh, like pine you know a soft wood or something or we might be carving in a wood like uh, purple heart or you know uh, walnut or something you know more a little more dense uh, you know our feed rate will vary depending on that I typically have a default feed rate for my end mills of 55 inches a minute which is a good all-around feed rate for any of the uh, you know your solid wood MDF plywood acrylics and everything uh, now when it comes into your non ferrous metals that 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 rule does not apply uh, you know you're gonna run different speeds but the RPMs is based on your bit diameter the higher the RPMs uh, the smaller the diameter of the bit you know you're gonna run your IPM RPMs at uh, max so uh, we're typically gonna be set around uh, you know 24,000 RPMs which would be the number six dial on your router and as that diameter increases our RPMs will decrease uh, when you get really when you get around above an inch in diameter in your bit you're going to be around the you know uh, 14 to 16 to 18,000 rpm range um, you don't want to be running a big old uh, inch and a quarter planing bit at 24,000 rpms you're going to be around 14 to 16,000 rpm camera uh, and hopefully that answered that question all right, let's see what else we got here. Um, Tim Miller, could you show us how to get an STL file into V9, if that can be done quickly? That can be done very quickly. Let's uh, flip this board over and see what we got here. We got a nice looking heart. Now, we I can't delete the uh, outsides and everything of that because we got our tabs in there, but we got a very cool looking bottom. I don't know, you guys tell me, you like it, not like it, it was okay, you know, we could do better kind of thing. Let me know, and uh, but uh, it should be a cool looking box, especially with that lid in there, and it's a multi-purpose box. A jewelry box, candy box, it's gonna have candy, I don't know, Valentine's Day, no jewelry. <laughs> she gotta fill it herself with jewelry. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, very quickly, Add a new layer. We're going to call this uh, our, our STL sample layer. And that way I can turn off all the other layers. And we have a blank page. And let's go back to the top of our board. All right. So in the modeling tab, we are going to import a component or 3D model under the modeling tab. This icon here. You can also come over here and model you can import component or 3D model under your menu at the top as well. So we're gonna import that STL file. And so let's go through and uh, find 
an STL file. Let's go into our downloads, my downloads, and <clears throat> rows and concave. I don't remember what this one looks like. Here, bear with me a second. I've got some nicer looking models. We're going to do this. Let's do it right. A little, something a little more complicated. <clears throat> Not complicated, but. All right. Where is my folder? Should have a folder of. Of. Stand by. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> oh, psh, psh, pictures, libraries, pictures. I keep forgetting what computer I'm on. And uh, under pictures, under scroll down here, camera roll, STL models. Okay. So we've got some uh, models here and everything. So let's say that we were bringing in uh, this Navy model. We would open this model up. And now on these models, you know, sometimes, you know, depending on who created the model or how you bring it in, that model could come in, you know, sideways. It could come in upside down. It can come in, you know, uh, all different types of ways, right? So the first thing we want to do is orientate the initial orientation of the model. And in this case, I want to orientate it to the top. So if I click on top, that will show me the top of this model. Okay. Now, if I had to do any initial, uh, any rotation or anything on about the Z axis, uh, let's see if I go into my x-axis view here um, If I have to do any uh, You know revolving and let's turn this down a little bit, you know initial rotating and everything You know I could just depending on how I want to orientate this in I could change that rotation and everything now This one's going to come in uh, at a zero rotation, which is uh, you know along my x-axis which should be fine uh, and um, so we've got the you, you work with the initial orientation okay so we got it orientated properly now the size uh, of the material the uh, aspect ratio for X Y and Z are locked and so I can come in and I can resize this appropriately so I'm gonna go with my board is 12 by 12 so I'm gonna type in 12 it doesn't matter on the X or Y and I'm going to click apply and so now you'll see my board here this uh, rectangular red rectangle box and I want to center that model in that to make sure I'm centered in there but when I do that it's not only going to center it within the perimeters of my uh, my design but it's also going to center the model itself so if I come look at this in the X or the Y view this line here represents my zero plane and let's uh let's kind of move over to the side this line here represents my zero plane and so when i centered that model it centered the model on the zero plane as well and so i want to take this slide bar here and i want to slide it all the way to the bottom because i want the bottom of the model sitting on top of my zero plane and one way when you're looking at it from the top view and everything is, you know, if I had my model below the zero plane, it would be this dark kind of uh, shadow gray color. You know, as I bring it up above that zero plane, you see this light color change and I want the whole thing above the zero plane. Okay. Now, from there, I want to discard any data that's below that zero plane. And where this helps me at is if I do come into an X view, let's say that, uh, and I ran into this the other day with a gentleman, um, one of his models that he had, had this little lip around the bottom of it that we did not want. He didn't want that lip in there. So that model was adjusted to where that lip was below the zero plane. 
and then when we discard that, it removes that part of the model. So in this case, I have no part that I want to remove from the zero plane. Uh, therefore, I'm gonna make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and I'm going to then click OK. Once I do that, the model will be brought into my project. Now, of course, I have to close my preview tool and then we can see that model, okay? And now, from here, I can adjust some of the properties of the model in VCAR Pro. We have some limited things that we can do. One of the things I would tend to do with this is I would adjust the shape height, selecting my model. I would adjust the shape height a little bit and give it just a little bit more shape in there, not base height, we can do base height too, and I'll show you what the difference is, but the shape height of this, and I'd go, you know, a point, uh, three, two. oops, too many decimal points, bear with me a second. <clears throat> All right, let it regenerate, you know, to build that model up. Give it a point three seven five. let's see here, point three seven five. Get some shape going on there. Okay, just kind of pump, puffing it up you know, pumping it up and everything. Um, and so, you know, we got a nice looking model there. And then on the, if I wanted, you know, this, this model has no meat underneath it and everything, uh, which is fine. It's going to be, it's going to be carved out of my three quarter inch wood and all. But if I was adding this to something, all, I could add some base height uh, underneath it. You know, and that's just going to be that straight material, you know, that's underneath. Now my rope overlaps my base. My rope model does. Um, and uh, let's get into a full top view so you can see this. And turn it down a little bit. Now my rope overshadows my um, my base, you know, and everything, uh, which is fine. But in this case, on this particular model, I wouldn't want a base height. I just want to kind of puff up that model a little bit. Now. Once we do with that, uh, very simple, unless we're adding something to this, uh, you know, additional design, then I would jump right over to creating the tool pass. Now, when you have a 3D model, you want to set your material setup. You want to work or hit the set button and you want to jump into your material setup and we want to make some adjustments. So we're working with an inch and a half thick material. We are starting at the bottom left. We are touching off on the top, but now I have a model in that inch and a half block. Where do I want to position it? Now on the top of my model, all the chain link and the rope and everything has a nice contour to it. Well, the top of my board is flat. So I don't want to be right at the top of the board. So me personally, I like to add at least, uh, you know, 20 thousandths of an inch of meat there that have to be milled away before it starts shaping that model. Once I do that, then I can come in and uh, click OK on my material setup now that I have that model adjusted and then I can create the tool pass. I can create the tool pass. I don't want the model right at the top so let's click OK. Uh, it's gonna say I, I got tool pass from the other I don't want to recalculate those right now. So now on this this is a very small model as far as uh, you know as each other. There's not a lot of material that's got to get milled away. So on this particular model, I do not require a rough cut. There's not a lot to be uh, taken away. So I'm going to go straight to the finishing toolpath on this. And I'm going to be using uh, a ball nose end mill. And now I have, not only do I have the chain link, but if I zoom in here, I have this rope, this little bitty rope coming off this anchor. And so I want to be able to get that rope detail too. And so... I'm going to use, uh, you know, a small diameter bit. So I'm going to go into my tool database and I would tend to use a uh, 16th inch end mill uh, tapered ball nose. And um, that's a 32nd. Uh, let's see here. Let's go in there. There it is right there. Thank you very much. A 16th inch ball nose. And I'm going to use the, if I'm cutting this model out, if I'm cutting the profile cut out, then I'm going to use just the models of boundary. There's no sense in us wasting time carving all of this waste area. 
So I'm going to use the model as a boundary. I am going to raster. I always re recommend rastering with the grain uh, of the board. If my grain is running along the x-axis, my raster angle is going to be zero. If the grain of my board is running along the y-axis, my raster angle will be 90. Okay. I'm going to raster along the x and I'm going to click calculate. <clears throat> okay uh, it's going to take a second to calculate and one last thing I want to do is I need to create a profile outline for my model to do the profile cut so after this calculates it shouldn't take very long while that's calculating let's go on to the next question um, <clears throat> note for future class demo how to add fonts to v9 okay well let's go ahead and do that all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump online very quickly let's open up a web browser and grab a tab here uh, my preferred choice of uh, website to go for fonts is www.dafont.com, a uh, place where you can get thousands of fonts for free to use both personally and commercially. I uh, love this place. And so um, let's say that, you know, none of those fonts apply or that I like. So I'm going to go into kind of a, oh, let's go into kind of a handwritten And let's see if there's something that appeals to me that I don't have. I got a lot of fonts. Chanel. Now, one thing I like is go into more options. So that way it only shows me free fonts to use both personally and commercially. And now I can come in and make my decision. Uh, so, uh, Dustin looks good. Fowler doesn't look too bad. Still a kind of a big fan of that Chanel. I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and download that font oops I didn't hit submit that's not a free font let's hit submit there we go all right let's see Chanel if it made the list no it didn't all right that's okay we'll find another one all right I'm gonna grab any old font uh, let's see here something that would look good I'm kind of liking the uh, Bodhi Vanita. I like that. All right. Yeah, that's a good looking font. You get two font styles, uh, you know, the hollow font and the full font. That's I like it. So we're going to uh, download that font <clears throat> to our computer. And then we're going to open. I'm using Google Chrome. We can minimize my Chrome. <clears throat> And uh, I'm going to go ahead and extract it, extract all. And I'm going to extract it to my downloads in that Bodhi Bonita font. Bodhi Bonita, shout out to Bodhi Bonita. All right, so now on these two two type fonts, I'm going to right click on them. Now it's going to freeze up on me because my Windows does that when I right click rapidly. So it's going to disappear in about two seconds. Or it might open up one of the two. I don't know why my Windows 10 does that ever since the update. There we go. Let it regenerate. Give me a second. <laughs> it does that every time. I don't know why it loads folder. Downloads. We're going to right click on that font. Don't do it to me twice in a row. There we go. We're going to click install. All right. It'll install that font. We're going to right click on this font here and click install. Now those two fonts are installed on my computer. So if I come in and close my Vetric out completely and reopen it while that model is still calculating, I can now come in 
create a project and in my text box I should be able to type in the letter B and it should be right there I should have the two fonts um, styles uh, the Bodhi Bonita and um, the other one I forget what it was called it was called stand by B D Danita B Danita dash shadow. All right. <clears throat> so Bodhi Benita and then the other one had underscores. They should have been side by side with each other. B Alright. Don't you trick me. Oops, that one went. I need to do this shadows. Come on, don't unrespond. It's gonna block up on me again. Alright, anyhow. Uh, I need to reinstall the shadow one, um, but uh, so it will come up on my list here, and uh, that's it. Now I can, you know, uh, let's see what this uh, test font. Let's see what this bad boy looks like. Let's drag that up here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Ooh, not that big. F9 to center and let's uh let's V carve that. Let's see what that looks like as a V carve. So V carve. Zero start depth. Calculate 60 degree V bit. Rinse and repeat because it's the last thing I used. And if we preview that selected tool path. Oh that's sexy. I like it. I don't know why I like it. Because I do. If we add some color to that uh, font, you'll see I like it. Bam. That's why I like it. That's a nice looking font. I like them. Good choice there. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question on how to add a font, how to download, add a font. You just install that font on your computer, restart your Vetrix software, and it will recognize that font once it's installed. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look here. Can you talk about the laser and its uses? Yeah, Peter, I can. Um, and uh, did I lose? All right, we 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 lost our feed. Stand by, guys and girls. We lost our feed again. Uh, that processor speed of that uh, model. Stand by. Let's see if we can get back into it here. My, my, Miss American Pie. Did you guys hear any of the text? Did you see any of the things I just did with the font? I did not pay attention as to when the last, uh, let's, uh, let's go down. Let's see here. Did we see anything with the font guys and girls? Tell me yes or no. If you saw any of that, me installing the font, me downloading it, any of that. Cause I have no idea when that cut out. No. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All right, black screen from downloading of fonts. Well, that was because I was processing this toolpath and uh, it took away from my um, <clears throat> All right, so here's what we're going to do. All right, oh, that's going to be a pretty navy symbol. Okay, here's what we are going to do. Really? Quickly, this was the font we downloaded. I've got the screen still up. 
let's make sure that uh, nothing blinks out. Let's make sure, stand by for two seconds. Okay. I went to defont.com, guys and girls. I found a font that I liked, and it was 100% free, so I downloaded those two font files. Downloaded them to my computer. We will do this once again. We will click on Download. Okay. Once it downloaded, I opened this font file, and I extracted that zip file. It comes as a zip to us. So we just simply extract that file. Okay. Okay. And now that I've extracted that file, I can right click on that file and click and choose install now that fonts already installed because I just did it a few minutes ago so I am gonna replace it and let it install that font for me on the next font I'm going to right click and install okay now once that's done, I would very simply restart my Vetric software. And once I've done that, it will now recognize those fonts in my font list. Okay, so if I open up the text box, we can type in, uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm just teasing. All right, so we're going to do one inch tall text and type that in. Now, what I was saying was I really like this font and I'm glad I chose it. It's called... Uh, Bodhi Bonita because the reason why I like this font is the way it carves. Okay? If I were to V carve this and I have to, I have to fix these two real quick. So bear with me a second while I fix those two. I'm going to turn that font into a curve. I'm going to select these items here and I'm going to group that together as one. I'm going to select these two items here. I'm going to group those together as one item. G for group. And I'm going to weld those two items together using my weld tool. Okay. All right, now I've got one other issue here. So I'm going to take the E and I'm going to group those two overlapping lines together. Actually, the, the this one's the only one overlapping, but the Y, I'm going to group those two guys together as one item. And I'm going to select this here and I'm going to weld using my weld tool. Okay, now... If I select this font and I V carve this, Laney rolls. I don't roll, guys. I'm just playing around. Uh, if I weld this and calculate, um, what do we have? Where do we have four open vectors? Select all open vectors. There's no open vectors in there. All right, I'll let them be ignored. Calculate. Now, 
Now, the reason why I said I like this font is when we preview this font, it's very sharp looking. And if I added color to this font, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I need to fix that RNU still, but I still like that a lot. Anyway, that's how you add a font to the Vetric software. Download the font, install the font, extract the font file, install that font, and then open and close your Vetric software and it will be it will be recognized in that list. Okay? All right. Now, um, the laser engraver is a six watt uh, laser engraver and it is uh, just for engraving. Now you can cut through materials on small stuff, paper, uh, cardboard, multiple passes, you know, thin leather and things you should be able to cut through. Uh, but when it comes to the wood, you are wood burning, you are engraving. So you're not going to be cutting out any wood uh, and things. Um, uh, that font name is B de Bonita. B D E Bonita. B O N I T A. Very nice font. Um, the um, and we can erase that. All right. Now, um, the laser engraver is for engraving, uh, and the. Uh, it's a six watt laser. Now, if you want to cut through material, cut parts out and everything, we have a 60 watt and a 90 watt laser that are two separate machines. But for that six watt attachment, we are engraving. We're wood burning, uh, you know, and um, uh, multiple uses. I mean, all kinds of things that we can do with it uh, as far as engraving, uh, you know, inscriptions. We can, we can carve in, uh, we can engrave in acrylics, plastic, wood. Uh, we can even do some engraving in metals as long as we... Uh, cover the metal uh, so that the reflective surface we can't have any flare back you know we don't want any flare back up uh, but uh, do a research do laser engraving on Google and take a look at what it is and that's what the laser is all about it's just it gives another alternative for carving things uh, or engraving things uh, you know rather than just doing a wood carving we can do an engraving and if you saw on the Facebook post, uh, the laser engraving I did the plaques. I mean, take a look at those plaques. Uh, and um, what I will do is, uh, at the show, I have a, uh, a, a CNC engraved a plaque of the same kind, uh, same style, and show you the difference between the uh, engraved, with V carved, should I say, and the laser engraving. Uh, it's a phenomenal little tool, but it is a six watt laser. It is engraving. You're not going to be able to cut through things unless they're very thin, small things, you know, very thin paper, cardboards, uh, possibly some foams, uh, and, uh, leathers, small, thin leathers. All right. <clears throat> now let's take a look and, uh, see here. <clears throat> Gonna scroll back up because we lost a lot of footage there, man. Sorry about that, guys and girls. I apologize. That uh, don't know why. All right, so now uh, bear with me a second. And um, so we got the uh, how to add fonts. We got to how to bring an STL file into the model. Talk about the laser and its uses, laser engraving. Um, let's see here. Peter says something weird going on. I have a U.S. Navy seal on my screen. <laughs> I don't know if that was a joke or what. Uh, let's see here. Uh, note to mention from Baron Lynn. Uh, you can view each font in Word so you can see a picture of it prior to actually using it on the V program. Absolutely. You can type out your text and all and look at the font in a Word document uh, and everything uh, to, uh, you know, kind of get an idea of what that font's going to look like, you know, before you, you know, do it in your, you know, uh, your uh, VCAR program. Um, at that point, uh, after Baron's little comment, we lost the, um, we went to black screen. 
and then uh, we ended up coming back we ended up coming back and that's where we ended up so are there any more questions on anything and by the way I'm, I didn't process this uh, model all the way through because uh, it is uh, for some reason interfering with the reception tonight uh, I don't know what's going on. I've got a lot of stuff on my computer. I need to kind of take some things off or what have you. The resources are getting sucked up, but we can kind of see, you know, that would be a that will be a very nice looking model, you know, uh, the way it carves out with that 16th inch end mill, you know, from the half piece that we can see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for tonight we are going to um, call it an evening. And we are going to pick up this box class. Uh, we're going to pick up this box class in a class on Monday. And we're going to finish out this heart box with the lid. We're going to be working on the lid and everything. Um, let's see here. One last little thing. Uh, can you explain the TNG update? Okay. TNG, uh, Stephen actually pointed this one out to me. TNG stands for the next generation of CNC USB controller. With the TNG software, we're going to have a little bit more control in the back end. And as far as the uh, front end, we have, you know, we have things that we can do where we can add custom tabs and buttons and stuff, and we can write our own little scripts and all. But TNG, uh, a lot of the bugs that were in the CNC USB controller software had been kind of cleaned up and uh, removed and a lot of the operation of the machine you know some of the jumpiness that we would get from time to time in the cnc usb controller software uh a lot of that has been smoothed out so we get a little bit smoother operation um it does it's not an it's not an update that's required you do not have to switch to tng we would like everybody to start moving towards or levitating towards tng and um uh, because it is, you know, it, it does make the machine run smoother. Uh, there's some users uh, in the group that are using TNG. They, they should be able to attest for that. Uh, you do have some, uh, you do have some uh, uh, more control in the back end and the settings and things. And um, it's just, uh, the algorithms in the program uh, are just make things just a lot more, you know, useful and, and everything. Um, it does smooth out the operation and it is something, you know, worthwhile. Now, TNG is only applicable to MK3 or MK34 boards. Okay. MK3 or MK34 boards. So if you have an older machine that has an MK2 or 24 board, then you would require it would require updating to the m3 board and that update kit to update from the mk2 to the mk3 the update kit and everything uh that uh you would order from us is 275 dollars for the upgrade okay if you did want to upgrade to tng and you wanted to you know get the 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 next generation the, you know and keep things up to date and running smooth and all that stuff uh, if you have the MK24 board uh, in your control box, you would be uh, required to, if you want to update to the TNG, you'd be required to update to the 3.4 board, $275, $275. Now, again, it's not required, but eventually we'd like to see everybody get there, you know, when the time comes. Uh, because it does really the the bugs some of the bugs and glitches and things that were in the uh, CNC controller software uh, the as far as I've seen uh, and everything have been kind of uh, cleaned up and removed and uh, just it's a nice nice running little system uh, you know and all so that's about it on on the TNG and uh, I'll be doing videos on how to use the TNG how to update the TNG and all that stuff because every new machine from uh, this week on is getting sent out with TNG so every new machine uh, will no longer be using CNC USB controller all the new machines being sold from this point on are being sold with the TNG software 
And so you're going to see more and more videos and things on the TNG software, setup, use, how to add buttons, how to add tabs, how to write your own little scripts and codes. You'll see all of those uh, coming up in the very, very near future. Um, a little bit long uh, to go into the lithophane uh, process, uh, but uh, just to give you a quick glimpse, if it, I'm going to close this program. Let me save this uh, work for uh, next Monday's class. Bear with me a second. Let's go into our class file. Where's our class file? And let's save this as our Valentine box one. And save that. And then Creating a lithophane uh, in the Aspire software is super duper simple. In the Vetric V-Carve, or uh, sorry, the Vetric Photo V-Carve, uh, there's a few little steps and things. You don't have a lot of the flexibility that you have or the ability to clean up things as you do in the Aspire software, but I will show you just very quickly because it only takes a few seconds. So we're gonna close out and exit out of uh, the uh, V-Carve software completely and we will uh, close out of that uh, Bonito and we will open up Aspire yeah Bob Vectric does have a good video on lithophanes I'm gonna create a new file this is gonna be an 8x10 project a quarter inch thick uh, to match my Corian or my uh, you know cast acrylic or my white plastic or what have you you want to use a not a uh, semi translucent material that is not fully translucent but semi translucent so we're going to click ok on this i'm then going to switch over to the modeling tab and i'm going to create a component from a selected or imported bitmap image i'm going to open that up and i'm going to come in to my images and i will select an image Right upon import, it converts that image into a grayscale model. Already upon import, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and click F9 to center that model up. And I'm going to open up the size tool and I'm going to size it down to my 8x10 material. From there, I can look at it in the 3D view and we can see the 3D view uh, of the, uh, the model that it's created. If we're doing a lithophane, a lit lithophane, we need to go into the properties of that model and we need to reverse them from an up to a down and add to a subtract. We're going to come in here and we're going to click this and we're going to re reverse this because with a lithophane, the more material that gets carved away, the thinner that material is, the more light that will shine through. The thicker the material, the less light that can go through and that's where you get your lights and darks of your shading, okay? Now, I went ahead and reversed this tool path. I can go ahead and close this. Now I want to smooth this out some. So I'm gonna use the smoothing filter. I'm gonna click apply and click on that. It's gonna smooth out this 3D component that was created and now I'm ready to click OK to lock in that smoothing and I can come over and create my tool path. Now again, I'm gonna set my material because I have a model and I wanna make sure there is a little bit of material above my model so I don't get any flat spots and there is, so, but I wanna bring that 0.03 to 0.01, give me a little bit more meat. And I'm gonna click OK on that material setup just like we did with that uh, Navy a moment ago and I'm going to go into the 3D finish toolpath because this is so thin there's no need for a roughing toolpath or you know yeah a roughing toolpath now with this I can get away with an eighth inch end mill but I do want to use a 16th inch mill because in mill because uh, you know I want the best quality I can get for this lithophane I'm going to use the model as a boundary I am going to raster the cut and I am going to calculate this toolpath <clears throat> this will take just a second. Hopefully we do not lose 
Um, hopefully we do not lose our feed while this calculates. All right, I'm going to stop this uh, calculation. I'm going to change this bit to an eighth inch in mill ball nose and uh, calculate that so it'll be just a little bit faster than the 16th because I have a very tight step over and everything on my 16th inch in mill. And I don't want, we would be sitting here for quite a few minutes uh, yeah, to process this. But just know I use a 16th inch ball nose when carving this to get in especially into these little areas like on this little doggy sweater which you should you don't have to I mean you can use whatever you want all right we are almost to the end here and then there's one little tip and trick that I can show you uh, so you can kind of get a visual of what your image will look like when it's lit when it's lit when it's lit up okay so let this calculate. Bear with me for just a few more seconds while it processes. Almost there. <clears throat> All right. So now we can go ahead and preview this toolpath. So we'll go ahead and preview the selected toolpath. <clears throat> now I am running this toolpath in a very high simulation uh, for the toolpath up here at the top menu. You can click on toolpath, go down to toolpath preview quality. Set it, it's you normally set it standard, but I'm running at a very high simulation. That's why it's taking so long, it's so slow. And everything but the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm about to create a component off of this preview I'm about to create another model from this preview so bear with it for just another few seconds let it process this And while that is happening, let's uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Sorry, we had a little bit of buffering there. Uh, we've got some buffering again, and you're going to get buffering, guys, uh, while it's processing this uh, toolpath because we just are. Not sure why we're going to get buffering, but we are. Oops. <laughs> You're going to see the screen. My broadcast screen is going to pop up in front of the screen for a moment. But um, let this process. It's nearly there. Uh, here, let's do this. Let's stop that. Because, um, you know, just know to use the very high simulation. I'm going to change the simulation quality to standard. Okay. And I'm going to preview that select toolpath, and you'll see how much faster that standard preview cuts. Okay? You'll, you'll see here how much faster that standard preview cuts. <clears throat> All right. And uh, once we do that, now we're going to come in, and we are going to go into the modeling tools. You're going to see that uh, you're going to go into the modeling tools here and we are going to go model, create component from, create component from toolpath preview. Okay. Create component from toolpath preview. When it does that, it'll create a new model. So let's switch back over to the model side and you're going to see toolpath preview here. Now, I'm going to turn off our uh, our original design. I'm going to turn off our original model for a minute so we can focus on this toolpath preview. And I'm going to go into the 2D view. And in the 2D view, I want to take that toolpath preview and I want to slick on the properties of it. And I want to reverse that those properties. 
and this is what my lithophane this is a reposition oops sorry hold on a second let me get back on there this is a represent representation of what my lithophane would look like lit with backlighted okay which is not bad looks very good I'm very happy with it uh, so <clears throat> That is the lithophane. So hopefully, Baron, that kind of explained it a little bit. Um, and now we are uh, 942. We do need to start wrapping up. I will check uh, the Facebook group, see if there's any comments that I missed over there uh, or questions. So bear with me a second. Let's do that. And all right, things look good there okay let's come back here and all right boys and girls well hopefully this was a good class for you hopefully you enjoyed it very much I want to thank you okay uh, for sticking with me through all these long processes these glitches and things tonight um, it was uh, you know glad we made it through all right, until next time, I will see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.